In this presentation, I will discuss how data flows in a CR, PSP plate-based radiographic system, starting from the initial order and ending with the posting of the exam to a PAC system, awaiting interpretation. Before beginning any exam, preparation of the patient and your equipment is necessary. The steps necessary to prepare are, at minimum, to greet the patient, confirm their identity, and confirm the exam you will perform and have them remove any clothing that might interfere with the examination. While the patient is changing, this is a good time to gather the imaging plates necessary to complete the exam. One plate per view. With computerized radiography, it is not necessary to put multiple views on a single plate. This was done in the film screen era to save money, so select one plate per view. Also, this is a good time to associate the imaging plate with the patient and with the view the plate will eventually contain. If you are unsure what the association process is, I will explain further in following slides. Finally, it is a good idea to set up the x-ray room before the patient enters. Center the tube to the bucky, lower the examination table if necessary, have any positioning aids ready at hand. I recommend that you associate each cassette that you will use with the patient data and with the view the cassette will contain before starting the exam. If you are performing a hand exam, cassette 1 will be associated with the PA projection, cassette 2 with the oblique projection, and the third cassette with the lateral. It is important that the cassette designated for a particular projection contains that image. Mixing the cassettes with their assigned images will affect projection correction parameters applied to process the image later in the exam. There are two association methods common in radiography. The first employs a barcode on the imaging plate that is visible through a window in the back of the cassette. The patient data and view are called up on the computer screen and the radiographer uses a scanner to read the barcode and the cassette with the ID code is associated with the PA projection of the hand for the patient John Doe. When the plate is removed from the cassette and read, the image will be sent to John Doe's exam and the image corrected using adult hand correction factors. The other method to append patient data and exam information is to store it on the plate itself. This is done by using a radio frequency ID, RFID chip, as part of the plate itself. This is like printing the patient information onto an x-ray in the film screen era of radiology. The cassette is placed in a slot in the scanner, patient data and view information called up on the screen. The radiographer then issues a command and the computer wirelessly transmits the selected information onto the plate's RFID chip. When the plate is processed, this chip will be subsequently read by the scanner and the image appended to the patient's folder, and proper correction is applied to the image using projection data, in this case the PA projection of the hand. At this point, all CR scanners work in a similar fashion. First, the scanner removes the PSP plate from the cassette. Then it scans the plate, reading the image data. The scanner will also either query the plate for the patient and exam information or read the barcode matching the plate's ID information to the view and the patient. Using a histogram, and other analysis data, the image is corrected, setting density and contrast to optimal levels for that particular view. Finally, the image is masked to prevent eye strain for the radiologist. Now is the time to evaluate the image. 
If it is underexposed, the image will have a grainy appearance from quantum model and need to be repeated. Overexposed images normally don't need repeat, but rather require correction of the technique for future examinations. Post-processing image manipulation should not be needed. Just a consideration if post-processing manipulation is necessary. For example, I have seen masking errors caused by the computer mistaking a long bone soft tissue interface for collimation border and subsequently causing the mask to extend over the anatomy. This is corrected by unmasking, drawing a border, and remasking the image. You don't want to end up in a courtroom and have the assertion that you've ever manipulated images to hide or cover up incompetence. The best way to justify post-processing manipulation is to document the change by annotating the radiograph. If it is not allowed, report the changes in the exam notes as part of the patient's record. Bottom line, annotate all post-processing changes you make to an image. Additionally, if you adjust the window width or level, return the image to its default settings before posting to the PAC system. Some systems will not allow further window width or level manipulation once posted to PACs if changed from the default settings. Use a critical eye when evaluating an image. Is positioning, centering, and collimation adequate? Finally, look at the exposure index number. Is it within the desired range? If not, take notes to correct the problem in future examinations. To summarize, the information flow for a CR radiography exam the computer needs to know what exam you are performing. Accurate patient information is important. It not only links the exam to a particular person, but also helps the computer optimize the image in post-processing. The exam you are performing is an important factor and must be entered into the computer. Each projection you perform must be properly identified or the computer will not apply the, the proper correction algorithms to finalize the image. Before or during the examination, the radiographer links a particular plate to a given view on the exam. During the exam, the radiography must take care to use the cassette that is linked to a particular view. This controls the accuracy of post-processing correction. This association is accomplished by reading a barcode on the plate and storing the information in the computer or by reading the patient's information from an RFID chip and associating it with the computer's current exam record. After the exam is completed, the plate is fed into a reading device and the plate is scanned for exam's raw data. At this time, the image is not suitable for reading. It must be corrected for density and contrast. First, the image must be located and this is most commonly done by having the computer search the image for the collimator margins. Once the image is found, correction algorithms are applied to the image area, correcting contrast and density issues specific to the current view. Finally, the image is masked to eliminate white borders around the periphery of the image and to alleviate eye strain for the radiologist. The image is displayed so the radiographer can evaluate it for diagnostic quality. If the radiographer applies any changes to the image in post-processing, it is important from a medical legal standpoint that these changes be documented as part of the patient's record. Once the evaluation is complete, the patient is released and the exam is posted to the PAC system for storage and subsequent reading by the radiologist. This will end my presentation regarding radiographic information and workflow during a radiography exam. Thank you.